creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you a paper crafting DIY showing you how you can utilize some of those cereal boxes that you may have lying around and maybe you're gonna think twice about throwing them away when they're empty because when you see what I do, you're gonna love it. This is a paper crafting DIY that is completely Pinterest inspired. I'm just bringing to you these DIYs, showing you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do them because Pinterest can be a little bit complicated when you're just looking at pictures and writing. It can be a bit intimidating. And so sometimes I feel like if you have a video that you can follow along with and start and stop whenever you need to, rewind, I feel like it makes it a lot easier. And paper crafting is such a budget-friendly craft. I love it. I feel like it's really addicting because paper is so inexpensive and it's such a fun way to gift some of those edible items that you might want to gift people for a holiday or their birthday or just because. And so that's why I bring you these paper crafting DIYs from time to time because I really just like to incorporate a paper crafting DIY into some of my edible gifts that I give, whether they're homemade or not. And so let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you today's paper crafting DIY using cereal boxes. You are not gonna wanna miss this. Let's get paper crafting. I gotta tell you all, I am obsessed with Michael's Craft Smart paper packs. I am loving them. I mean, really, they're 12 by 12 inch paper packs, 48 sheets come in a pack, and you can get them anywhere from four to six dollars, depending on the sale. And I am just loving the fact that they come out with packs for each of the holidays, each of the seasons. I really just wanna try and get a pack for each of the holidays because they're great packs. And so today I'm gonna to be using this new one. This is Dark Botanical. Loving the purples and the blacks with it. I think that this is just such a fun and different color scheme to go with. And so I thought I'd switch it up from the farmhouse. This paper pack is amazing. I am loving just the butterflies. It's got some uh, foiled paper. Today we'll be using this one and we will be using this black tufted one that is in the very back here. Yes, this black tufted one, isn't that gorgeous? Along with the this purple and gold foiled. I think that these are just beautiful and they're gonna go nice together. But this whole pack is just amazing. It even has some wood in it, the marbled finish. It's got a whitewash wood, butterflies, loving it. A dark wood, so it kind of really just has everything and it's a different color scheme than what I usually use. And so I thought it'd be fun to switch it up a bit. Like I said in the beginning, I'm gonna be showing you how you can repurpose some of those cereal boxes, maybe an oatmeal box, maybe granola bar boxes, any of those boxes that some of your snacks and your food come in, this is a great way to recycle them. Cereal boxes are great because there's a lot of this cardboard. I'm gonna call it cardboard. It's a thicker cardboard, maybe a card stock. And it really is the same thickness as a chipboard that you might buy at Michael's. Now, if you don't have any of these boxes and you wanna paper craft with me and do this DIY, Michael's has chipboard. It is a very thin chipboard. This comes in their open stock paper for 79 cents. It's by Recollections. Here, I'll zoom in so you can take a picture of that if you need to. Again, this is with their open stock paper, 79 cents a piece, or you can go on to Amazon. I'll link it down below and you can get a full pack of these, 100 for about $15. And so that is another really great buy. I bought them off of Amazon just recently because I was gonna make so many of these as gifts. And um, 
I was gonna run out of cereal boxes, and so I'm not gonna buy cereal just to make these. Alrighty, so for the chipboard or your cereal box, you're gonna need two pieces that measure out at four inches by seven and a quarter long. And you're also gonna need one that measures out at seven and one eighth long by 14 sixteenths of an inch wide. So it's a little less than an inch wide, which would be two lines less than an inch. And I wanted to really quickly show that you can very easily cut through the cereal box using a paper cutter. Probably not the best for your blade, but it does work. For the outside of the book, I'll be using this purple and gold or even a rose gold printed paper. I am loving the foiled print on this. And this piece is gonna measure out at 10 by eight inches. So it's gonna be eight inches wide by 10 inches long. If you haven't seen my video on all of the great things that the Dollar Tree carries for paper crafting that you can get for under, I would say 10 to $15. I'll link it in the description box below because I don't want you all to be intimidated and not do these paper crafting DIYs because you feel like you need all these fancy tools when you really don't. Dollar Tree has some amazing things that you can use that are gonna get you started with paper crafting and keep you going and so, Really, it's a budget-friendly craft, and um, I love crafting with paper because, like I said, paper is very inexpensive. You can make some amazing things out of it, and yeah. So this is the ruler that I was referring to that the Dollar Tree has. This is the one I would definitely get, not a solid color so you can see through it. For this paper here, we're gonna score it at 3 8 of an inch on all four sides, which is a little less than a half an inch. If you don't have a scoring board, you can use your cutter and you can use a pen cap to score or just use a pen cap and a ruler. I prefer a clear ruler, one that you can get at Dollar Tree because you can see through it. And so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and score this on all four sides at 3 8 of an inch. Once you've scored your paper at 3 8 of an inch all the way around, you're gonna go in and score at four and a half inches. And you're gonna score at five and a half inches. Now on all four of our corners where we scored, we've got this square here. We're gonna cut this square out. And so when I cut it out, I'm gonna cut it out at just a bit of an angle on each side, which is just kind of tapering in our edges. I'm not gonna go right along those scoring lines perfectly because this is gonna give you a nice clean fold. So kind of like a little slice of pizza is uh, what you would do there. We're gonna fold in all of our scoring lines with the back of the paper face up. These two glues here work really great when paper crafting. This Aileen's Tacky Glue, this is a three ounce bottle that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Crafter Square came out with this new clear one. Some Dollar Trees do have the clear Aileen's gel glue. If you can get that, I would get it. If not, this Crafter Square is a great alternative. You can use that. Again, Dollar Tree has a double-sided roll of tape that you can use that is identical to this, just without the dispenser. Now taking the cardboard pieces, I'm gonna apply some glue or tape right along the outside edges here. And now I'm just gonna place these in their rightful sections here and you should get a pretty nice snug fit. I'll show you that end to end, it fits perfect. You want it right up against your scoring lines. You wanna place this end right up against the scoring line, but you're gonna see that you still have a bit of space down here, you want it that way. There we go. And so we've just centered all of our pieces. So when we fold this in, we've got a book. 
And so that's why you don't want these ends too close together because you wanna be able to open and close your book nicely without ripping your paper. Now we're just gonna tape in or glue in our flaps. So you should be left with this. Now, if you're gonna wanna close your book and tie it, now would be the time that you're gonna add a ribbon. And so I'm just gonna take this black ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna hot glue it down. And I'm not sure how long I want it, so I'm gonna cut it on the longer side just to make sure I have enough. And just to make sure we get it in the same place, fold your book over. Now to cover the inside of this, I will be using this black tufted printed paper. I am loving this. It just really goes nicely with the outside paper. And this one measures out at nine inches long by seven and one eighth inches wide. And so this is just going to be glued right in like so. Glued or taped, it really is your choice. You pick what you want and how you wanna do it. To adhere this in, I am going to use some glue because it does take a fair amount of glue and I don't wanna use up all my tape. And so I'm just not gonna be super heavy handed um, with the glue. I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry and I'm going to show you how to do the inside box to this, which is gonna be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. For the box, I'm gonna use this solid black cardstock and this measures out at six and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches long. On the long side here, we're gonna score at three fourths of an inch. one and a half inches, again at eight inches, and lastly at eight and three quarter inches. We're gonna rotate. We're gonna score at three and a quarter, one and a half, again at five, and then five and three quarters. Now on all four corners, you're gonna see that you have these four boxes here. The two on the end, we're gonna cut off. And we're gonna do that on all four corners. And I'm just gonna do this a bit different just to make it easier because I know that in the past when I've been cutting pieces out, some of you say it gets a little bit confusing. And so, We'll cut out our pieces first. So with those pieces out, you should be left with this and you can see your scoring lines here and you still have two boxes on each corner here. Now we're gonna cut a slit. Just like that, so our piece comes up and we're gonna give it a bit of a taper with a pie shape, not too big, just a little bit on each side here. And this is just gonna give you a cleaner fold. So again, we're gonna cut the slit and then we're gonna taper in the flap. Not this part, just the flap. And so this is what you should be left with. And when it's laying down, you can see that just the slightest cut in, tapering it in, just kind of gave it a bit of a gap. So now we're gonna go ahead and fold in all of our scoring lines.
and you're gonna take your flaps here and you're gonna fold those in and you're gonna hit that back side with either glue or tape. And since I've got my tape out, I'm gonna use tape. And you're gonna do that to all four. And before you fold this in, on this inside, you can see you've got this flap and in the middle, it's scored here. On this outside, flap on all four. When it's face down, we've got our flaps in here that have glue on them or tape. We're gonna put just a bit of tape on this outside edge here on all four sides. Now this box is ready to be put together, so we're gonna fold this up and our flaps are gonna go in. I mean, and it really does come together pretty easily once it's all folded in. And now we're just gonna fold in our flaps here. There we go. Look at how cute that is. Look at how easy that was. Super easy box. Now back to the book cover. I know we're jumping around, but I really wanted to give this time to dry because we used a glue. So taking a bone folder or your ruler, you're gonna wanna fold in your crease here. And if you do this too soon while it's wet, your paper's gonna buckle and you don't want it to buckle. So you wanna give it time to dry. And then again, we're gonna fold this one in. You just kinda wanna crease it nicely so your paper doesn't buckle. And this is giving you your book. We're gonna put just a bit of glue here on the back of our box or the bottom of our box. and we're gonna place this right in the center of one of our flaps, our book flaps here. Look at that, we've just made ourselves a book box. I love this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this up just for now. There we go, I'm happy with how that looks. I think I'll trim these down just a bit. I'm gonna do it at an angle. Look at how pretty that looks and it goes so nice with this, really makes it look elegant. In the paper pack came this cool sheet of cards, embellishments, and so I thought that I would just use this to embellish the front of this book. If you wanna leave it the way it is, you can, but when you have a page like this in the scrapbooking paper pack, why not use it? That's what it's there for. I think I'm gonna go with today is the perfect day to start living your dream. I like that a lot. I've got some pretty good scraps left. And so I think I'm gonna use these and some of Dollar Tree's double-sided tape. This came in a three pack. Just kind of elevate this a little bit by putting some of the puffy tape here on the back. And then I'm gonna place it right on here just to frame it a bit. Kind of give it that matte look. And I'm not gonna use my cutter, I'm just gonna go with my scissors and cut out around it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna place it on here because it's not gonna look good like this. So we're gonna add some more puffy tape to this. And then again, we're gonna frame it. Of 
Oh yeah, that looks nice. See how it just kind of frames it out, ties it all in together. And again, I'm gonna finish this off with some puffy tape, but I'm gonna put it more in the middle so it doesn't show on those outside edges. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. I love that. And that there is a finished paper book box. It doesn't get any easier than that. Look how easy that was. And look at how gorgeous this is. Imagine if you made several of these and you put them on a bookshelf. Ugh, nobody would even know you made these. I mean, they are just gorgeous to even gift something in. Absolutely gorgeous easy to do you can put candy you can put a gift i mean there are just endless possibilities of what you can put inside of this i love these i think they're super easy to do and like i said i love to paper craft so i thought i'd bring you along with me while i do it too once in a while i think that this is fun just to switch up and do something a little bit different than a dollar tree diy and it's still crafting on a budget isn't that awesome? You can very easily use a cereal box instead of buying chipboard. Nobody's gonna know that you did and you're gonna end up with something as stinking cute as a book box. This is such an easy DIY and the outcome is amazing. I love the fact that you can buy these paper packs at Michael's and they come with everything you need. I love that the embellishments are in this pack and it's just fun to DIY using these paper packs. I hope you all enjoyed today's paper crafting book box. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes. And if you all wanna see more of these paper crafting DIYs, you gotta leave me a comment in the comments below because I go off of your feedback and I don't want to bring you something that you all aren't enjoying or that you're getting bored of. I personally will never get bored of paper crafting because I love it so much and it really is just one of those crafts that you can do in front of the TV on a weekend while you're watching your favorite Hallmark or Lifetime movie. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day, happy paper crafting on a budget, and bye for now everybody. Music